Hello everybody and welcome to this A-Level Chemistry exam question walkthrough where we're going to be taking a look at some multiple choice questions about the group 2 topic. Feel free to download these questions from the description, have a go at them yourselves and then watch this video to see how you got on. What is a use for barium sulphate? Is it A in agriculture to act as a fertiliser? No, group 2 metals are used in agriculture but not as fertilisers and we see what they're used for in B, to neutralise acidic soil. But it isn't barium sulphate that has this use, this is calcium hydroxide, or more commonly known as slaked lime. Is it C, in medicine to produce an x-ray image? Yes, this is the correct answer. Barium sulphate is a chalky white solid, which when you eat it, it coats the stomach and the esophagus and the intestine, and then when you fire x-rays at it, it is photo-opaque, so that means it behaves in the same way as a bone, and you can get an x-ray image of the digestive system and detect problems. And so D is obviously the wrong answer, it is magnesium hydroxide used as an antacid to treat indigestion. Which property would you expect the element radium to possess? Well, radium is a group 2 metal and it's at the bottom of the group in period 7. So is it A, it would form a soluble sulphate? Well, you need to know about the pattern insolubility down group 2 and they get less soluble as they go down. Barium sulphate is in barium meals as that white chalky solid. And so this won't be true because radium is below barium in group 2. It does not react with water. Again, this is not true. Metals get more reactive as you go down the group because they lose their outer electrons more easily. It is a good conductor of electricity. Well, it's a metal, so it will be a good conductor of electricity, and so this is the correct answer. Which means it will not form a covalent fluoride. It has a really low electronegativity and will definitely be ionic. Which statement is not correct? Strontium has a lower first ionisation energy than calcium. Well, strontium is below calcium in group 2, and so it will have a lower first ionisation energy because that outer electron is lost more easily. Strontium has a larger ionic radius than calcium. That will again be true for the reasons I mentioned before. It's further down the group, it will have an extra energy level, and therefore its ionic radius will also be larger. Strontium reacts less vigorously with water than calcium. This is the incorrect statement and so the correct answer for this question. As we go down the group, the metals get more reactive as they lose that outer electron more easily. And this is because there are extra energy levels shielding the nucleus as attraction and the outer electron is also further from the nucleus and so calcium is oxidised less easily than strontium. Which property of the group 2 elements calcium to barium increases with increasing atomic number? A. Atomic radius. This is in fact the correct answer. The atoms have extra energy levels as you work your way down the group, and so the radius of that atom is from the nucleus to the outermost electron, and so this will increase. Electronegativity decreases as a direct result of this larger radius. There is a weaker attraction for the covalently bonded electrons. Similarly, first ionisation energy decreases down the group because as atomic radius increases, the nucleus's attraction for its own outer shell electrons decreases and so the outer electron is lost more easily. The melting point also decreases down group 2 because that electrostatic attraction between the nucleus and the delocalised electrons is weaker because the charge density is decreasing down the group. Which substance is used to reduce titanium 4 chloride in the extraction of titanium metal? Well, titanium 4 chloride is TiCl4, and that's because titanium is a plus 4 oxidation state, and it's going to gain electrons and become titanium metal. And the element that does this is magnesium. We need two magnesium atoms each of them giving away two electrons and becoming plus two oxidation state each, and the titanium gains a total of four electrons in this reduction. And so this is the overall equation. Titanium chloride plus two magnesium makes titanium and two MgCl, and so A is the correct answer. 
The other options seem plausible because we encounter them in various other redox reactions across A-level chemistry, but it's not the one that is used to reduce titanium, that is magnesium. Which statement about barium sulfate is correct? It is soluble in water at a temperature of 100 degrees C. Well, that seems like it might be plausible because that's definitely a high temperature, but at that temperature, water is going to be turning into a gas and probably isn't going to be dissolving anything. B, it is used in medicine because it does not dissolve in body fluids. This is the correct answer. We use it in barium meals where the patient takes this barium sulfate and then we can use it to x-ray the digestive system and diagnose any potential conditions. And that works because the barium sulfate won't dissolve inside the patient and it's photo-opaque, which means it can absorb x-rays and appear in a similar way that bone would during the x-ray procedure. C is wrong because barium sulfate is a white colour and barium chloride would not react with barium sulfate. Which compound is used to treat the symptoms of indigestion? Of the four options, they're in two pairs. We've got two magnesium compounds and we've got two calcium compounds. And we've got two oxides and two hydroxides. Magnesium oxide is not a group two compound that you need to know any uses for. Is it magnesium hydroxide? Yes, this is in fact the correct answer. Magnesium hydroxide is used in some indigestion tablets as an antacid, which means it neutralizes the excess stomach acid. Calcium oxide is a plausible seeming decoy because it does have a use. It's used to react with the sulfur dioxide produced in power stations and things like that, and it removes it because calcium oxide is a base. Calcium hydroxide is also a base. It's used in agriculture to neutralise acidic soils. Which of these decreases down group 2? First ionisation energy. Well, this is in fact the correct answer. Because the atomic radius increases down the group, that means that the atom gets larger. That means the outer electron is further from the nucleus and there are more energy levels shielding the nucleus as attraction for the outer electron, which makes it easier to remove, which means we use less energy to do it. I've already said then that the atomic radius is increasing, not decreasing. The number of protons similarly increases as you go down the group. And then last of all, the reactivity of water, that also increases as you go down the group for the same reason that the outer electron is further from the nucleus, it's more easily lost, and so the metals lower down the group are going to be more reactive with water because they oxidise more easily. They lose those electrons more easily. Sulphur dioxide, SO2, is produced when some fossil fuels are burned. Which of the following statements is true? A. Sulphur dioxide can be removed from waste gases in a power station by an acid-base reaction with calcium oxide. This is in fact the correct answer. Calcium is a basic oxide and sulfur dioxide is an acidic oxide, so they will react together in an acid-base reaction and will make calcium sulfite, which means that the other statements must be false, and they are. Sulfur dioxide is definitely soluble in water. That's one of the problems that sulfur dioxide can cause in the atmosphere. It interacts with water in the sky and can make water acidic which means therefore that it's obviously not a basic oxide, it is an acidic oxide, and it's not an ionic compound either. It's a covalent molecule, and that is one of the reasons why it interacts with water in the way it does. Which one of the following is a correct procedure for isolating a sample of hydrated copper 2 sulfate from a mixture of hydrated copper 2 sulfate and barium sulfate? We've not been told anything about the state of these two substances, so we need to assume that they are both solid at the beginning. Then we need to recognise that barium sulphate is insoluble, whereas hydrated copper sulphate is soluble. So we need to add water to this mixture first, and the copper compound will dissolve, and the barium won't. So that means that C and D are our two options now. And then we need to filter out that precipitate of barium sulphate. That doesn't help us. They've both got filter for the next step. And since the copper that we want is currently in solution, we need to get that filtrate that's passed through the funnel, 
crystallize it and dry those crystals to get our hydrated copper two sulfate. And therefore D is the correct answer. Which one of the following is the electron arrangement of the strongest reducing agents? Now reducing agents cause something else to be reduced by giving away their electrons to that substance which then gains them. And so the best reducing agent, the strongest reducing agent, is the one that is best at giving away its own electrons. And the one that is best at giving away its own electrons is going to be the one that has the weakest hold over its own electrons. And as we know, as an atom gets larger and its outer electrons get further from the nucleus, those outer electrons are lost more easily because they've got less of an attraction to the nucleus and the nucleus is shielded. So that means we're looking for the one with the most electron shells, which means the answer is going to be D. We've got the outer electrons being lost from the fourth energy level, which is much easier than the third or the second. Which one of the following statements is correct? The first ionization energies of the elements in period three show a general decrease from sodium to chlorine. That's not true. It is a general increase in ionization energy across any period. B, the electronegativities of group two decrease from magnesium to barium. This is the correct answer. Electronegativity will decrease down any group in the periodic table because the attraction for the covalently bonded electrons is going to decrease because the atom gets larger and its nucleus's pull, its attraction, is shielded by more energy levels. Which means that C is going to be false. The strength of intermolecular forces are going to decrease as we go from hydrogen fluoride to hydrogen chloride. And D is also false. That halide ion is going to be a better reducing agent as we go down group 7 from fluoride to iodide. Which one of the following solutions would not give a white precipitate when added to barium chloride? A. Silver nitrate. This would give a white precipitate because we would make silver chloride because the silver nitrate gives the white precipitate. B. Dilute sulfuric acid. This would also give a white precipitate. Sulfuric acid contains the sulfate ion. When barium interacts with the sulfate ion, you get barium sulfate, which is a white precipitate. C, sodium sulfate. This would also give a white precipitate because sodium sulfate also contains the sulfate ion, which would again make barium sulfate. And so D must be the correct answer. We're adding sodium nitrate to the barium chloride solution. Sodium chloride and sodium nitrate, both colourless solutions, and barium chloride and barium nitrate, both colourless solutions as well. So no precipitate forms. An aqueous solution of a sodium salt gave no precipitate when treated with either silver nitrate or with barium chloride solution. Which one of the following could be the formula of the sodium salt? So these all contain sodium, which means that we can really forget sodium. We're comparing the negative ion and we're looking to see whether that would make precipitates with either of the two chemicals added. So iodide, when you add silver nitrate to a solution containing the iodide ion, you get a yellow precipitate. Then the sulfate ion in B, sulfate ions interact with the barium of barium chloride and we get a white precipitate. The bromide in C would give us a cream precipitate with the silver nitrate. And so that means that D must be the correct answer. Sodium fluoride would not give a precipitate at all because the silver fluoride that could form is totally soluble and no precipitate forms. Which statement is correct? Magnesium reacts with steam to give magnesium oxide as one of the products. This is, in fact, the correct answer. Magnesium is quite reactive with things like acids, but it's not reactive with water particularly, but it does react with steam in a reaction that actually looks like the magnesium is burning. And effectively, that is what happens. The magnesium reacts with the oxygen to produce magnesium oxide, which is the same white solid that is produced after a magnesium piece of ribbon has been burnt. And we also produce on this occasion, though, hydrogen gas because that's where the rest of the water goes. And so that means magnesium is not the oxidizing agent in the extraction of titanium. It's the reducing agent. It has a higher melting point than sodium 
and it is not soluble in water. It is an insoluble hydroxide. So A is correct. OK, that's the end of this question and the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.